I know it's been an incredibly long time since I did one of these episodes. Uh, I apologize for that. I've been busy. I've been doing a lot of stuff. Recently got my black belt um, in Kempo, and I've been, you know, going to uh, a couple uh, conferences. Like, uh, well, there was Mid South, and then there was Parafest, and I've been, you know, going around doing a couple lectures at different places. Um, so many events, historical events like Fort Mifflin and stuff like that. So I've been keeping busy. But you know what? It always happens. Something comes around and it just pisses me off. So I have to talk about it. And well, in this episode, which I'm not going to number the episodes anymore. I'm just going to say, since, since we took a, such a long break, we're going to say this is season two. Okay? Just because it sounds really cool when you have, like, seasons. Anyway... Um, so episode one of season two, we're going to talk about peer review, and there I go with the hands. We're going to talk about peer review, okay? What is peer review? What is it? Well, basically, we're going to define it as a critical part of the scientific process. Now, now take note, I, I said it's part of the scientific process. It's not the entire process. It, it's not everything that has to do with science isn't peer review. It's just part of it. It's one of those steps. And I'm really, I'm making this clear because apparently there are so many groups out there, and I'm going to touch on this later, but there's a lot of groups out there that uh, claim to be scientific, and they claim to use the scientific approach. And unfortunately, there's a scientific method, a process that you're supposed to be using if, you know, you're scientific. And unfortunately, you, your groups out there that claim this, most of them, from what I've seen, are skipping all of the steps, you know, and just going right to concrete evidence. They're skipping all the steps of the scientific process and just going right to saying, you know, whatever they have is true. Um, so, all right, let's get back. I'm getting off track here. What is peer review? Um, let's see. It's a process of quality control and uh, the self-correcting nature of science. Uh, basically, that breaks down into... Um, you have people, you, you publish your stuff, you publish your work, okay? If, you, if it's a paper or it's pictures or whatever, you publish it and your friends, not your friends, but peers within the community. Now, let, let's define this. They're not your buddies. They're not your, your ghost hunting pals, you know, because of the paranormal unity crap or they're your buddies that you've, you've grown up with or something like that. These are people that have knowledge in specific areas, such as uh, photography, um, audio, uh, audio mechanics, I guess. I don't know what that's called. Audio, audio engineer, maybe. Um, video, and I don't know, biology, psychology, and all these other sciences. Physics, maybe. Not just a background of physics, but actually studied physics. Um, these people look at your work, and they review it, and they tell you what's wrong with it. They tell you the mistakes, the errors, the boo-boos, the screw-ups that you have. And not only that, but they tell you how to correct it and what to fix or what they want to see more of. And that helps your work become better. It improves the quality. Um, I want to check out my notes here because I wrote a lot of stuff down. Basically, you know, th these people are bringing in their knowledge and their experience and they're dissecting all the claims that you're making. They're, they're providing detailed criticism. Which, for the most part, your, your majority of ghost hunters call that bullying. Bullying. Am I saying that right? Bullying. I have to say it slow. Um, but you call it bullying because apparently you think they're picking on you when they're just giving you constructive criticism. Um, what else? Uh, they, they try to help find mistakes. And not only, not only do they find the mistakes, but they help, help you correct them. And all of this comes together, peer review comes together and helps maintain and enhance the quality of work by, detect, by detecting all the weaknesses in your work, okay? It, it looks, what else? Also, the more reviewers you have, the better chance you have of finding mistakes, which means if you just, if you send it to a buddy and say, hey, take a look at this, that's only one person, okay? But if when you post it, say it on Facebook, because that's where a lot of this drama shit happens, if you post it on there, now you're going to have hundreds, potentially thousands of people looking at it and critiquing it. Peer review is great. It's part of the scientific process. It helps you become better. So why are we talking about peer review? Well, we're talking about it because, as I mentioned earlier, there's a whole bunch of, of groups out there, like 
thousands of groups out there that claim to be scientific. And, you know, this means using the scientific approach. They use science and this and that. And it's science, science, science. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word that's thrown around the paranormal community anymore. It really doesn't mean shit to them. Um, anyway, yeah, tons of groups are using the, the term scientific. Yet, the majority of them, they, they get pissed off at the idea of anybody else coming in and critiquing their work. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because here, here's, here's the thing. Here's the catch, okay? It's not okay to pretend to be scientific and yet completely avoid the scientific process. To completely avoid it, ignore it, and cast it aside because you actually don't know what the scientific method is. That's not okay. And that's why people like me come after you. I guess. I mean, that sounds mean, but we come after you and question you. And yeah, if you look foolish, it's your fault, not mine. Because you should read a book. And it, it's, it's weird, because on the flip side of this review thing, when groups do accept the reviews, and this is not all groups, but the majority of groups that I see out there, when you do accept the reviews, it's not actually intelligent, educated reviews. You're getting... People that are inexperienced, uneducated, and, well, pretty much ignorant of what's going on, posting things like, great catch, you know, and, and that's awesome, and I can't believe you caught that, I wish I could get that, and all kinds of stuff like that. That's not peer review, that's called praise review, and it's shit. It's, it's, it's just as useless as a K2 meter, seriously. K2 meter, praise review, in the paranormal community, crap. I mean, when you have all kinds of these, these posts on a thread that make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside, yeah, you know, it feels good. That's, that's great. You know, everybody likes that. But what the problem comes in when somebody like me comes in and it posts something that's halfway intelligent and has a good explanation with details and even references sometimes on why this, say, photograph isn't what you think it is, aka apparition, um, and it's actually like a long exposure and it's somebody else on the team and this and that. When I have a good explanation, the, the problem is that most of the time I get yelled at, I get insulted, cursed at, made fun of, which is kind of silly. I mean, because whatever. Um, and then my, my post is eventually deleted. And that's ridiculous because they keep all the comments that, that you know, put them on a pedestal and, you know, kiss their ass. And that doesn't help anybody. That doesn't improve the quality of your work because that just makes, makes you feel fuzzy and that's it. All right, so why does the paranormal community need peer review? Well, for starters, have you seen the shit that's out there? It's freaking crap. Holy shit. <laughs> there are the pictures and the videos and EVPs and stuff that's out there and the outrageous explanations there's absolutely no quality control whatsoever. None. It's ridiculous. You, ah, there, there is no quality because, well, the quality control is is due to a lack of, of knowledge, a severe lack of knowledge in the sciences, such as areas of photography. I mean, I do photography, so that's why I pick on them a lot. When when you see these videos, I'm I'm always talking about photography because that's what I know. That's what I do. And I see a, a severe, severe deficiency in knowledge. You have uneducated, inexperienced people that are offering expert opinions on photographs of the unknown. When these guys have no clue how to work a camera except to push the frickin' button. You can't do that. You are, you are not a qualified person to give peer review on, on work that's being submitted. That's what it comes down to. I mean, the problem is that you guys don't seek out third-party review. And I think we talked about a, that on an earlier episode. That you, instead, of, instead of getting your data and then presenting it to a third party so they can review it, a third-party expert, not, not another ghost group, because that's just, that doesn't make sense. Um, when you take it to a third party, they can give you a good review based on the knowledge and experience that they have. But you don't do that. Most of these groups go out, they collect their own data, 
and they decide for themselves, after reviewing it themselves, what's genuine and what's not. You have no quality control. You have no outside interest looking at it and saying, oh yeah, you know what, we agree because of this, because of this. You don't have that. You just put the crap out there yourself, and that's it. That's where there's no quality. What needs to happen is, through peer review, mistakes are identified. They're acknowledged, they're identified. We figure out how to fix them, what to do to fix them to make it better. And that improves the overall quality of the work later on. Because not only does it improve that work, but the next time that you come across, say, you take photos and, and you come across a, a photograph that's like that, you'll be able to see the signs that you learned from the last time and apply it to this time. And then instead of posting something that's a long exposure and posting it as, like, this is an apparition, you'll recognize some of the signs and be able to say, well, now I've learned about this. I know what this is. I'm not going to waste my time and post it. Your quality of work becomes better. Your buddy from another ghost hunting team patting you on the back and going, hey, great catch. I don't know what that is. That's not doing anything to, to help the quality. That's not enhancing your work. That's not improving you. That's not doing anything, you know, except maybe making you smile for all, all of like five seconds until, you know, somebody like me comes along and you get pissed off again. All right, as much as I'm an advocate of peer review, and I think it's a positive thing to implement within the paranormal community, uh, there are some negatives that we should address and, and, and talk about here. And, you know, since this is my show, I'm going to talk about it. One, one negative that is always out there, that's out there right now, are the biases, okay? When people are biased because they have their own idea of what is supposed to be, mostly from reading, like, those really crappy books that, that like, there's tons of ghost hunting books, how to be a ghost hunter or how to ghost hunt and equipment, and there's tons of them out there that all say pretty much the same thing and, unfortunately, don't help you much. Um, or they get their knowledge from TV because, you know, we all know if it's on power TV, it sucks. <laughs> anyway, so, so moving on. If, if you already have your ideas set in place and you're not open to anything else, you know, you're going to apply your biases to somebody's work. You know, they're going to say it's one thing, you're going to say it's another, blah, 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 go back and forth. Instead of looking at, at pieces of data and findings objectively, you're going to look at it through a filter. And that filter is your own ideas and, and beliefs and biases. Um, beliefs really come into it too. That's another problem. It really goes along with the biases. Because um, if you bring your religion into it and your personal upbringing, uh, your, your beliefs from your parents and grandparents and, and stuff like that, you're going to apply them to it and next thing you know, like, you know, magic and spells and this and that are all going to come out and you're going to have people freaking out because there's a brick wrapped in aluminum foil and it's supposed to be trapping demons and all this crap. It, it's, it's ridiculous some of the crap that's out there. So when, when you're doing reviews, when you're going to review someone's work, keep your own beliefs and biases out of it. Stick to the facts, okay? And, and that will help everybody. Uh, what else do we have? We have, oh, um, people that shouldn't be giving them reviews are dumbasses. Plain and simple. If you don't know about the subject, don't give an expert opinion, okay? Again, I'm going to pick on photography. If you don't know about photography, if you have no knowledge except, hey, this is a button, I push this, it takes a picture. If that's the extent of your knowledge, you should back away from giving any kind of opinion on photographs. All right, that's simple truth. Um, there's no, you know, shame in it. There's no dishonor, nothing. If you don't know about it, don't argue it. I mean, that's my philosophy. If I don't know enough about the subject to hold a decent conversation, I am not going to talk about it. I am not going to debate about it because I look like an idiot. Why, why would I want to do that? And trust me, if you come in without knowledge and try to debate me on a photograph because of your beliefs, and I have knowledge, I will make you look like a fool. Because, tech, as far as I'm concerned, you deserved it by that time. Anyway, um, lastly, what else? I know there was another one here. Ah, Unity crap. Whew. Look, 
I hate this Unity crap. I really do. I, I hate it because you get teams and ghost hunters that are conferences and stuff. I love the conferences. I do. I love going to them. I love interacting with people. But I can't stand when somebody's arguing a point to which they have no clue what they're arguing. And then some other jackass comes in from like two booths down and starts arguing his point for them. And neither of them know what the hell they're doing. All right, and they're doing it because they're you know they're sticking together, you know it's the ghost hunters versus the skeptics. You guys are freaking morons. Okay, I'm trying not to drop the f bomb so much in, in in this new season, so bear with me. Everybody wants to be unified and not step on any toes and get along because you're all supposedly going for the same goals. Well, you're not. You're really not. Some of you are out there for the truth. Some of you are out there to prove ghosts exist. Some of you are out there to get fame and fortune. And, you know, be on TV and be famous. Um, there's not the same goals. And backing up somebody just because you're in the same field is stupid. Scientists do not do that. People that use science do not do that. They don't back each other up simply because they're in the same field together. Okay? They want to be challenged. And this is a quote that, um, that my buddy Ben Rafford did. And, and he's a big time, he's one of the most famous skeptics out there. And he does a lot of writing for, for not online uh, news outlets, but uh, Skeptical Inquirer magazine and stuff like that. I mean, we're not close personal friends. I don't want to, you know, over, overstep my bounds here. But he's, he's a buddy that I talk to on a regular basis. Um, he gave me this quote that scientists want different points of view and questions, but ghost hunters don't. And that's pretty much, that's, that's where we go. That's where we go with it. Because you guys, you want to band together when somebody starts questioning you. So you have other people around you and you feel better about it. But that's not the thing. You guys should be, if you want to be unified and, and a, a community onto yourselves, then start questioning, questioning each other. That's how you do it. Question one another. And, and make everyone um, responsible for what they're presenting. Make them back it up. Uh, review them as peers. Peer review. Bam! I mean, if you guys disagree, which is okay, disagree, and it leads leads to discussions, um, challenge each other, engage in intelligent conversation, notice I said intelligent, um, all of this will lead to a better understanding, and it'll improve and enhance the overall, overall quality of your work, do you see where the, the you see the theme that I'm going with here, I mean, I, I've said it a few times, it, to enhance the quality of your work. That's what you want to do. That's what you guys want to strive to. Because right now, the paranormal community hasn't changed in like 50 years. There's there's nothing. You got a couple more gadgets that light up and make noises, but are essentially useless for what you guys think you're doing with them. There's no difference from like 50 years ago with paranormal research. There's nothing. You have to implement some of the scientific process. Start implementing it so that you gradually figure out what the hell you're doing. All right, I'm going to wrap this up because uh, we're getting near the end here. It's getting kind of long. So in conclusion, uh, let's see. It, it really goes back. The, the, my, my problem with this goes way back to a frustration I've had for a while. And I think I've addressed it in, a, in another episode. And it's groups using science in their description, in their names, yet entirely and completely ignoring the application of science in their, their work. Peer review, legitimate peer review by knowledgeable people is desperately needed. I mean, you, you have to understand, like, when, when in the real world, with scientific journals, that, that scientists do all their work, they collect all their data, all their findings, every little detail about it, and they put it together in a paper. And it's usually a long paper. And they submit it to a journal. A scientific journal usually is highly respected scientific journal. And what happens is the editor reviews it, and then he has other people that he sends it out to. Peers that review it. Peers that are knowledgeable in the related areas. And that... They look at it all, they look over it, read it all, and do whatever they have to do, and they come back and say, hey, you know, we either liked it, which usually doesn't happen on the first time, 
or they say we found these mistakes um, we need more information on this this was lacking in information uh, we need references we need um, this was wrong we tried this experiment we did this wrong blah 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 they come back with a whole bunch of things and say you need to fix this the guy takes it the scientist takes it fixes it resubmits it does this probably a few times um, I've never done it myself but I've read about it and eventually when he gets rejected from them you go down the list and that's what I've read that they go down the list to less prestigious paranormal ugh, less prestigious scientific journals I'm getting all tongue-tied here and they keep going down sometimes they go all the way to one like in some kind of third world country that nobody reads and it's in a dead language and they get published but I mean that's that's a big process it's really hard to get your stuff published um, but there's a thing called post publication peer review and what happens is that after a paper gets published now instead of like maybe three or four people reviewing it or maybe more I don't know how many is on the panel now you have hundreds or thousands of people that will read it read that journal and put in their two cents so in the paranormal community that's what you're doing you're posting it on your website and on Facebook and also presenting it at conferences you're presenting it you are already published your shit because you think I mean from from the process that I see in the community you guys collect your data you review it you decide what's real and you publish it or po post it whatever you want whatever you want to say you put it out there okay so all the review that anybody can do is after you already published it and said it's genuine okay so once you put it out there it's it's you honestly need to unbunch your freaking panties and take the criticism let it come in don't be pissed off if people say want to say great catch and all that shit the, the the catchphrase praise kind of stuff you know let them but when people post paragraphs and paragraphs of intelligent detailed information don't get pissed off I'll tell you what you do what you do is you read it and then if you get all angry you know your face gets red you want to type a lot of curse words that start with an F and get up walk away and then come back when you're calm and read it again and consider it and that means really consider the information that's being given to you does it apply to what you're doing does it apply to the evidence or the findings that you posted does my explanation in photography all the detailed information I give you does it fit and explain the photograph that you posted if it does suck it up okay don't don't go all crying and, and bitch fest you know and curse me out and stuff just say hey you know what I was wrong you were right and we all learned something from it and that's the way it should be we move on everybody learns we move on we do more stuff you apply the, the knowledge that you learn there to future investigations and you're better for it you have enhanced the quality of your work ta-da once you consider it and all that you know reply have a engage in an intelligent conversation and maybe we'll have more information and, and you'll learn more stuff and everybody that's reading it will learn more I mean admitting your mistakes admitting mistakes that you were screwed that you were wrong that you screwed up is really hard and I understand that I do because uh, you know I've been wrong and it sucks ass when you have to say oh, I was wrong because you feel like an idiot but doing that saying you're wrong and moving on is much better than continuing to to promote a lie once you know your stuff isn't what you think it is and you still promote it you're just bullshitting people now you're just bullshitting the pro public and and you're, you're useless to me I mean you're you're an idiot all right that's about it I'm pretty much done talking about peer review uh, hopefully I covered everything I probably didn't but you know because I was talking so fast I probably skipped a few things some points that I wanted to make um, hopefully you got the gist of it you understand how important it is I really don't think I said um, the f-bomb at all this time so I'm improving you know I'm trying not to curse as much in season two but don't worry obviously there is let's see what's coming up uh, September 21st and 22nd of 2013 
I will be at Paranormal Journeys. Uh, it's a convention. It's a first convention for them. It's in uh, Lansdale, PA. I will actually be there Sunday uh, talking about uh, photography and long exposures and the paranormal. Uh, Five o'clock on Sunday. But I'll probably be there Saturday hanging out, you know, talking to different groups and stuff. What else? Uh, there is October 5th uh, in the afternoon. I will be at the MUFON conference. Uh, that is in Bucks County, PA. Um, you're going to have to look up MUFON PA. Uh, that's the Mutual UFO Network. I do a lot of work for them guys too. Um, but that's in the afternoon because I have a family affair earlier. What else do I have? On uh, October 6th, I will be at the 1799 Lazaretto down in, I believe, I believe it's in Delaware. It's like just south of the uh, Philadelphia International Airport. Um, look it up. It's a cool place. They have like a history and mystery kind of weekend. Um, everybody dressed up in a period clothing. They have demonstrations. There'll be tables. Uh, I'll be there on Sunday, and I'll be doing probably another lecture on photography. So come on out. And uh, I think that's it. If you have any comments or um, just want to talk to me, whatever, contact me on Facebook uh, at I am Kenny Biddle. That's the best way to get in touch with me because uh, if you write stuff in the lines here on YouTube, I usually don't check it. You know, and it's like months after I realized someone cursed me out because I apparently curse too much on these videos. Fuck <laughs> you. Um, if you have any complaints and you, or you want to like make up rumors about me about threatening you or something like that, you know, contact Luke Steele out in California. He will take care of everything. Um, he'll listen to you, and he's Mexican. So, he'll probably make you a burrito um, while he's listening. So, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you later.